everyone, so I decided to make a separate video and share with you how I create the skin tone for my face of the day illustrations. So let me just hopefully in a quick way show you how you can um, create a skin tone. So here is our um, face base that we will start with. And let me actually put a sketchbook underneath because this is the last page. And there are a couple of pages I'm working on in this journal. Once I have finished working on that project, then hopefully I can do the um, the flip through. So there we go. So that's the face base. Now, by the way, these are my I don't want to create um, acrylic blocks. And then let's see. I'm gonna give her a big lip so we can put a nice bit of watercolor in there. Um, and then I'm gonna do these eyes and let's do these eyebrows. So I always start with the lip first because that gives me the right proportion or when I say right it's right for like my style. I like everything to be squeezed to the bottom half of the face. And then the eyes come next. <clears throat> so again, quite low in the face. And I'm looking through the uh, acrylic block. Oh, sorry, I just realized. And seeing where the nostrils are that's why I actually put the nostrils there so that you could see where to put the eyes and then it's all kind of um, you know in the center so you can see everything is squashed to the bottom half that's just my aesthetics you can play with these um, faces the way you like it so this also is um, available on my shop. It's a smaller acrylic block and it's great for all those small details. Again, if you're new to this channel or if you're just watching for the first time, um, this set is, uh, you can use everything on the small block except for the face base. Everything else fits on the small block. And then the... Um, the florals, they fit, all of them fit on the small block. Okay, so let me do the eyebrows now. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish it with a bit of um, line work and I'm going to come back and then we're going to focus on the skin tone and things like that, mixing all these beautiful colors. Look at that. They're gorgeous. All right, so let me just quickly do that. Okay, so here she is, my beauty. And all I have done, additional to just lining out what was there stamped already, I've drawn a line across the forehead, which will, which you can make a fringe out of, or you can put like a cloth on there. And um, the other thing is I've drawn in the teeth. I will do a separate tutorial. I have been super obsessed with these large teeth. Um, in my illustrations, so I have been adding them a lot and actually I've never mentioned this but there's this very large mouth it's the biggest mouth out of all of them which um, I didn't put any line here as well as didn't put any line here which gives you that freedom to add whatever like shape of an open mouth or teeth or whatever you want to do you can also create teeth in all of the others so this is an open mouth so you know if you wanted an open mouth then it's already done for you these you can still do and they look super cute with the lips um, with the teeth actually i don't think i have tried this one but i'm pretty sure you can do teeth with this one as well so i will do a tutorial on that now, uh, the earlobes and the little earrings um, is the last thing I have added 
as an extra doodle thing. So let's now focus on the skin tones and all of that. So what I'm going to do is just um, have this orange which I already mixed in. There's a bit of this pink. So I'll just mix it uh, together and also add the perfect peach to lighten it slightly. And then <clears throat> I will water it out and put it to the base of the palette right here and then have it very, very light to start off with. So you start with the lightest color. So if there's a bit too much water there, just dry your brush somewhere on a napkin or a tissue. So the way I do is I like to start somewhere on the forehead and just kind of go around the eyebrows if you have a few white bits here and there, I actually quite like them because they kind of create these natural highlights. Then I go under the eyes. So we, at this point, we're just bringing some skin tone to her face. Um, I haven't mentioned this will be a Caucasian skin tone. There's also, of course, darker skin tones that you can do. So this is first. While things are still quite damp, you're going to add a bit of the darker color now to the areas where you want there to be like a visual shadow. So a bit of nose, a bit of chin. Be careful with the side of the cheeks and things because that usually tends to look like a beard. A bit of the eye area like so. And that's a very strong kind of contrast. So I'm washing my brush out and now just blending a couple of these things because I don't want them to be sitting like that. So blend and dry and then wherever you don't want it to be that strong, you're just going to blend it out a little like that. Now the watercolor is still quite wet and you need to now if you want to darken it it's the time to do that so I'm going to add a bit of darker color just underneath the eye and above here so if it moves a little too much that will be just a you know like a watercolor effect So don't worry about it. Okay, I've been enjoying the process so much that I forgot to check how the filming is going and I realized the um, memory card got full. So I have no idea where it stopped but what I did was building up the skin tone and I hope you could see most of that. I built it up with three layers and then now I'm just adding this. And then the other thing that I like is when the watercolor starts bleeding into the neighboring color. So now let me show you how to create uh, this beautiful red that I was talking about. You just take the red and mix it with naphthamide maroon and that's all you need to do. The skin tone came out a lot darker than I was anticipating, but that's okay. So you can see how dark you can get. You can get even darker than that. So I'm leaving the highlight on the lip. And that's pretty much it. So everything that I would do now is just take again Neftamide maroon, the darkest of it, and then just add it where it's still wet, just on the sides here, just to make it look a bit more darker, like so, and then just blend it out, like that. Okay, so this is it. 
<clears throat> and this is actually quite beautiful how the watercolor flew into her eye. I quite like that just to let the art happen by itself sometimes. So you can see the eyes need to be finished and what I would do for the eyes is basically this pan here which is the zebra and it's got that beautiful perfect eyeliner type of thing and I'll show you on the one that's dry so it's very important to do this bit when the watercolor is completely dry and what you do is just create an eyeliner look like that that just makes it look a bit more crisp and finished there we go that's one eye done so I would do the other eye and the face is pretty much finished if you want any more demos like this let me know and I will try to uh, next time go straight into it without um, mixing the colors separately. Thanks for watching and see you soon